<coughs> Hi everybody. Today I thought we'd draw a mermaid. Since it is the beginning of Mermaid, uh, an, an annual celebration of the female fish human th hybrid. Let's draw. I'm going to uh, be drawing uh, on watercolor paper uh, because I'm going to paint it in later. And uh, I'm also working with um, this uh, it's a water soluble. Uh, pencil. It's watercolor pencil. It's um, that, that when you get uh, water on it, it, it dissolves. So that way, I don't have to erase my lines when I paint over it. They'll just kind of disappear after I ink over it. There's so many different kinds of mermaids. They can be, you know, different sizes, different shapes, different ages, uh, different varieties. You know, f the tails can be very elaborate or very simple. Um, just for the sake of time today, I'm going to keep it fairly simple. Um, and I tend to, uh, when, I, when I'm teaching uh, how to draw, I get very, um, uh, I, I teach to be very, very construction oriented and draw a lot of lines to, to show the shape that's underneath the lines. But if I'm going to be inking this myself, and not really uh, doing a, a um, uh, traditional instructional video. I guess this is sort of a how to draw, just draw along with me sort of thing. I'm going to be leaving a lot of things out. It's going to be kind of a, a lot of um, half lines, a lot of things I know that I'm going to put in later. I'm going to do kind of a traditional pose I've used with mermaids before. I'm going to have her looking down into her hands like she's holding a, a clamshell with some wonderful treasure in it or something. And in that case, I probably want to have her eyes open rather than kind of halfway closed there. And like I said, I don't have to erase this. It'll just dissolve away. But just for clarity, Everybody understands, and uh, so I know what I, I don't I'll make the mistake later. And I realize, oh wait, I was going to draw her eye open. Yeah, let's have her eye open a little bit. Maybe a little bit of smile here. There. This this pencil is very soft, and it gets very smudgy. But like I said, it it disappears pretty quick. I have a nice curve on her back here. And her arm. Make sure I make that angle on her arm is nice here. Now notice I'm not putting in a lot of detail. I'm not like drawing all her fingers. I'm just kind of drawing the shape of her whole hand. Keeping this a little bit impressionistic. I've seen some people draw these wonderfully elaborate uh, mermaid tails that are just have fins coming off of them. They have stripes and multiple colors, and, and I just those just amaze me. I'm very, very impressed by a lot of people's artwork here, and hopefully I'll like mine as well too. I just realized I made her forearm just a little bit short, so I'm going to bring her elbow back down a little bit, which makes her upper arm go at a slightly different angle. Always be kind of checking over your work as you're doing it. I mean, not to be self too self-critical and want to you know start all over all the time. But you know, keep an eye. Don't feel like just because you drew a line has to stay there. Now I also like uh, mermaid tails that don't look like it's a person wearing a costume. I don't want to see knee joints and and you know thigh bones and shin bones. I don't want it to look like there's an actual knee in it. I like to, I really like to choose poses that um, look like it's impossible for, you know, legs to actually be in there. I mean, after all, we're drawing a fish lady. Let's make it look like a fish. So I want to have her tail sweeping up this way. And plus, I just like the general overall design. We have this nice S-curve of her back going this way, then her tail coming around this way. 
I don't want to make her tail too short because mermaids need a lot of power, right? And that's got to be a lot of strength in that tail to propel them through the water. So yeah, I've got to make sure that if I straightened out her tail, it would be twice as long as her torso here. So overall, yeah, it looks like a nice, nice basic mermaid shape. I'm not going to put a lot of extra fins on here. Just like I said, this is a, I don't want to make this uh, drawing, this video last hours and hours. And what I'm going to do is have her hair kind of sweeping out over behind. It's going to be kind of coming out around her ear and just swept up over her shoulder. Come around the other side. It adds a nice silhouette behind her too. It silhouettes her, her head and her face and her profile. Uh, sometimes I like to, I don't like, I'm going to do it this time. I like to put like a, some sort of seashell or some little decoration in their hair. Not just for decor, but it also serves a purpose to hold their hair in place. Because all the long hair, it would go everywhere. You'd need some sort of comb or barrettes or something to hold it in place, right? And a trained starfish will help. That's a nice, nice start, I think. All right, put my pencil somewhere where I won't roll down. I'm working, by the way, on a, like I said, watercolor paper. This is a watercolor block. So when I'm finished with this, it, um, it, the, all the papers, you can see it in there, it's stacked up together. Um, it's, it's gummed all the way around the edge. So I can just uh, run a, like a palette knife or an X-Acto knife around there and peel it up when I'm done. It uses that technique with the gum all, uh, all the way around and so it holds the paper taut. Uh, usually if you work on watercolor, especially with a lot of water, you need to tape it down to your drawing board so it won't you know, shrink. And, and buckle, and this takes care of that for you. It makes it very portable. Oh, let's see. I need a sheet, extra sheet of practice paper, just to, especially if you're working ink and paint, just to make sure everything's working. Because sometimes these, uh, this pen's a bit older, so the bristles are wearing out a little bit. This is a brush pen. It's by Pentel. This is a Pentel pocket brush. If you open it up, you can see it's got a a vial of ink in there, but oop, that's almost empty. Hopefully this will this will not run out of ink before I'm done here. Because my ink pens are my ink refills are way on the other side of my studio. I'll be very slow with this. When you're working with a brush pen, it's very different than working with a, a dip pen or a felt tip pen. Um, because you know the tip is so it's a brush and you don't want to push. Like you can push your your pen with a, a felt tip, but working the brush, you always have to have to pull it. Now I'm going to leave her lips unlined because I'm going to paint them in red later, and if I, I don't want a black line around them, but I can use a nice use some red paint on there later. You have to be, uh, with a brush, you have to learn to be very consistent with your pressure. Because it's just slightly more pressure gets the line a lot thicker. Like I said, I didn't uh, mention before, I didn't draw all the lines I'm, I'm going to be inking. I leave that for later uh, a little bit because uh, one reason is I don't want to uh, pre plan too much uh, for myself because then at this stage when I'm trade, when I'm um, inking it, it just becomes a tracing. I want to leave a little bit more work for myself to do. Just give myself an idea where these lines go. A little more curve to these uh, starfish arms. It makes it feel like they're wrapped around her head a little bit more. Uh, be careful there. See, I smudged the ink line. I broke one of my rules. When you're working with ink or anything wet, it 
it's good to work from one side of the page to the other. If you're right-handed, like I am, to start with the left side of the page and work over so uh, you're not, you know, working across, you know, getting your, uh, your scraping your, your hand across where, uh, where it's still wet. You can see I'm making some changes. I, I, that line of her arm I did pretty straight in pencil, but I, I know when I'm going back with ink, I'm making, uh, putting some more, uh, a little more curve to it, a little more anatomy. I'm going to put a big old stinking pearl in this oyster shell. Before I said it was a clam shell, but if I'm going to put a pearl in it, it's got to be an oyster, right? And I know oyster shells don't look quite like clam shells, so forgive me. And I made that error. There. I don't know if you can hear my cat wailing in the background there. It's getting close to feeding time. See him going just a little bit wider. I, th I think I made her tail just a little too skinny. So I like a lot of musculature in the in these fish tails because it takes a lot of power to move through the water. Yep. And I turn paper around because, like I said before, I always want to be pulling this line toward myself. I got real lucky. I don't think I'm going to run out of ink, which is good. But I will definitely refill this pen as soon as I turn the camera off. I got a little smear there. I'll have to try to cover that up when I paint. There we go. There we have nice ink outlines. Now, uh, now to watercolor. Yep, that's my favorite kind of paint. I work with watercolor. I work with gouache. Sometimes I work with oils, but. It always comes back to watercolor. That's my favorite. So let me get set up. Let me let the ink dry, and we'll come right back to this. Signed. One mermaid ready to go.
Happy Mermaid, everybody. Let's do some more. 